Hey everyone, this is episode 5 in making a track from start to finish. This is what it sounds like so far. So we're not making a um, arrangement just yet, we're still working in a loop and we're just building up different effects, different sounds. And today what we are doing is making effects. So we're going to make some sweeps and some little textured sounds that are going to sit in the background. So let's start by creating a new MIDI clip, coming over to the instrument rack and we're going to grab a operator and we're going to chuck that on the uh, MIDI channel that we created. And let's um, select this um, two bar period of time, go control shift M, draw in a MIDI clip. And then if we draw uh, a line, uh, a big MIDI uh, note across that entire clip like I've done, uh, it doesn't need to be on any note in particular because what we're going to do if we come over to the instrument is we're actually going to use white noise. So we come in here, we go white noise, and if I solo that and we have a listen to it, it's just um, all of the frequency spectrum filled up with sound. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a filter to shape that sound. Um, and the type of filter that we'll use today will be a bandpass. So this is the filter section inside of Operator. I'm going to talk about Operator pretty much as though you already know what it does. So if you are new, don't be intimidated by that. Just sort of follow along where I do. And as you follow along, you can actually learn how it works. So we've changed it to this filter. Um, which is a bandpass, so that means it's going to cut the high frequencies and the low frequencies, and it's just going to give you uh, a little piece of information no matter where you... so you can sweep the frequencies and it's going to move where the filter is filtering and you're going to hear different parts of the sound. So what we'll do is we'll bring it down low and we'll put the resonance up to maybe 40 and what we'll listen to is we'll just let it play, I've got it soloed and I'll just move the frequency um, around. Cool, so what we're, we're going to do is we're going to automate this. So if I right click that, I can actually say show automation. And it puts this orange line up here and I can um, click on the orange line and I can move it and you'll notice that down here as I move the line, the value of the frequency is changing. So if I put that back to around 300 there, uh, and then if I, if I grab this end and I pull it up, it's going to move from 300 to, uh, let's say, 7.7 kilohertz. All right, so, and then I've just held Alt, and that allows me to bend it. So I'm just going to bend it. reason I do that is just because rather than having, um, like, a, a linear, I think the right term to use, sorry, is linear, um, so a straight line, um, we're using an exponential curve. So it um, will s sort of ease into it and then rapidly move up. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Okay, and that actually sounds almost perfect already. So we, what we'll do is we'll have a listen to it in the context of the whole track. And this is technically mixing, um, but we're just going to get it to the right level, uh, which we should really be doing right now anyway. So we don't want sounds, even, even though we're working still on a loop, we don't want sounds that are just way louder than everything. We sort of have to balance the volume. So... Cool, so I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit. And we can send this into that reverb. Um, so if I put that on, say, negative 20, and remember in the last the last episode we were talking about the sand, so I'm, I'm not going to go over that stuff again. Uh, and I sent it to the, the delay, that was clever. Um, negative 20. We're gonna need a bit more, maybe. And actually, this is a, uh, this is a short reverb. I forgot. Um, what we'll do is we'll go long reverb, and we're gonna make a creative reverb reverb um, for this one. So let's go. We'll call it long. Oops, long, <laughs> long verb. <laughs> 
Typing is a little challenging. Um, reverb, chuck it on there. Who would have thought typing was more challenging than producing music? Interesting. Uh, put it on 100% wet. No pre-delay. Um, and then let's send, let's just send it all into there. Why not? Cool, we'll put it on high quality and um, we'll cut the lows, but we won't cut the highs. Just swap that around. There we go, it's got a nice shine on the top of it. Um, how's that sound? Sweet, it's really nice. Let's freeze that. Let's flatten it. We've just turned it into audio. Okay, so we're going to deal with it in audio. And what we might do, just so I can, sh um, just so I can show you lots of cool little ideas, um, I'm just going to turn that off so the automation goes away. I'm going to right click and I'm going to set it to 30 second notes. And then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to do something like this. All right, so we can um, just do micro editing where we're going to chop out certain parts of the sound and um, what I'm doing is I'm essentially sort of setting it up so it's gating the sound or um, so you'll hear what I'm doing cool and if we just solo it you'll hear it even better So you'll notice that it is clicking and popping a little bit. This isn't the cleanest and best way to do this, but I just want to give you an example of it. Uh, we can tidy it up later. What we'll do. Cool. Um, and maybe that doesn't work quite so well at the end because you don't expect it to happen. Nice, that's really, really nice. Um, so yeah, if I was being very pedantic, I'd come in here and I'd actually make sure that I didn't have any clicks and pops by putting little fades on things. Um, another way of doing that is um, if you don't want to micro edit it and you don't want to chop everything up, you can do this trick. And just bear with me a moment while I remember exactly how to do it. Um, like I said, these videos, I kind of just do them on the fly and just remember techniques that I use. So um, if I don't hit it, uh, the first time, forgive me, I just have to remind myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the amount on 100% for the auto pan. And if you don't know what an auto pan does, you're going to find out pretty quickly. It moves the sound from left to right, right? And we could actually use the auto pan and do that. And and we will actually. So, um, But first of all, we're going to use it in a slightly different way. So we're going to change the shape because we want a square. And then we want to put it on 16 notes. And then we want to change the phase. Yeah. So what that's doing is it's essentially doing exactly what I was doing when I cut it up. So let's listen to it. Um, and let's pull the phase back the other way and just make sure that we don't prefer the way that sounds. Yeah, that's better that way. Okay, so that's just re reversing whether it starts, whether I was sort of deleting a, uh, the... F it sort of changes the way that that works. And uh, instead of deleting this one, and we don't hear that one, what it was doing was it's deleting the first one, depending on which way around you have the phase, because it's telling it where it's going to start. It's, maybe that's a bit too complicated right now. But if you set it up, like this, um, you're going to get that effect of it turning on and off the volume. Uh, and when you change the rate, you can do it faster. And, you know, 32 sounds pretty sweet, but you'll notice there's no clicking or popping. It's very clean. So it's a good. And what you could do is you could do this. So if we right click and show automation, um, we could right at this last bar, we could turn it up faster, right? So throughout here, oh shit, oops, sorry. Throughout here, it's going to be 16 notes. And then right at the end, and maybe we like it, maybe we don't. Mm, 
Yeah, it works. What you could do is this as well. So you could do one like that. Um, go back, click the channel, duplicate the channel. Right? And have one that doesn't do that. So now you've got varied white noise sweeps. So that's a cool way of doing it. So what we could do is we could actually um, freeze that and we could flatten that and then we can look at the audio and we can see what it's done. See? It's chopped it up. And it's not exactly doing it in the timing that would be ideal as now, now that I look at it. But it really doesn't matter. I'm happy with that. Freeze track, flatten track. Okay, so now we've got two versions. One that... Um, how does this one sound if I cut that last one off? Sounds fine. Sweet. So now we've got two white noise sweeps. That's great. Um, and I'm going to volume fade the beginning of them. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm going to go control J and I'm going to go control J. That's just to consolidate. So now the volumes slowly comes in. You don't hear it right at the beginning. Um, and then what I was going to do is I'm going to get the auto pan back again, put it on there. And maybe we'll put it on a square shape again and we'll put it at about 60%. And this time we're actually going to use it to move, move it between um, the speakers and we'll put it o one over eight and we'll have a listen to how it sounds. So you notice it was alternating between the left and right channel. Perfect. And we can put that, um, if I click the title of it, hold control, and then drop it on the other channel, it'll create a copy, but I have to hold control. Once it drops, I can let go of control. Great. Both of them sound really nice, um, and we don't need them both now, so I'll take this one and I'll put it to the side. Um, and then what I could do is I could create another channel. I could grab that sweep, hold down control again to make a copy, drop it on there. I could reverse it. And then I could put it as a little down sweep as well. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. And if I turn the volume down, maybe I turn the volume down on this one even more. So let's have a listen. Doesn't quite work that well. Um, what we're going to do is we're, we can come in here and we can actually set the beginning of the clip um, more accurately. So if I get rid of that and tell that that is the start point, now it's actually sitting on the grid perfectly in time. So if we go... Sweet, now, now it works and it's seamless between the two. Um, because that's starting at a much better time. So I'm going to consolidate that. All right, well, we've got sweeps. Let's go ahead and group it. And we're going to call this um, sweep uh, risers. So anything that kind of fits that description. We'll go sweep one, sweep two, and down sweep one. Right, so that's... I. I I visualize this as going up because the filter sort of opens um, and I visualize this as going down because I've reversed it in the filters then in turn going back. Um, we could send this one through to the ping pong delay as well. Kind of adds a cool little effect to it. And we could do the same for those ones, but I don't want to put delay on too much stuff. All right, so we've got some sweets. What else could we make? Um, I want to make a cool sort of sound that um, sort of sweeps down and just creates a really nice sort of sizzling textured background. Um, it is a sweep because I'm going to sweep a filter over it. I'm going to set it to 13, 30 second notes. Um, and what key is our track? And I can never remember this. Um, uh, kick, bass. We're in D. Remember that. We're in D. So, um, draw a note. Draw a note. Draw a note. Draw a note. Copy those four notes. 
duplicate, duplicate. I'm just going to duplicate it all the way out. And then I'm going to come to instruments, grab an operator, and let's have a listen to that. Change it over to a saw wave. I'm just trying to find a pat pattern that works, so... Okay, and if I just quickly grab that kick... Pull the volume down. That's all right. So we're going to go to a band pass, put the resonance up. Cool. And I'm just going to have this very quiet in the mix and I'm going to have a bit of delay on it. And I'm going to, okay. Uh, I'm going to do some very gentle filter movement on it. Okay. So we're going to, so we're gonna whoops sorry if I change that Maybe we'll pitch the start of the sound as well. We don't need it to start quite so high. Okay, right, that's sounding okay. We just want it to be a very gentle texture in the background. Um, and when it comes to mixing the track, we're gonna make sure that we can just hear it floating around in the background. And we're gonna make it pan from left to right. And we'll probably do that over eight bars. So it's over here now on my left side. Now it's over to my right side. And if we want to make it a bit more interesting, what I've been using a lot lately is Redux, which is bit reduction. It does some really cool stuff. So Just use it on soft. Nah, it's kind of destroying the sound a bit too much. So, failed experiment. But I think it's sounding pretty good how it is. And we can put a little bit of reverb on it. That's a lot of reverb. Let's put it. And we can come back and readjust the rhythm later on down the track, but I just sort of wanted something very smooth and in the background, just floating around to create a more dreamy soundscape. And this is what you need to start thinking about. So what we're doing essentially is we're building not only a... So kick and bass is in the center. What we're doing is we're creating a cube, essentially. We're creating a stereo field. So think of a cube in front of you. And you've got your, obviously, your right channel and your left channel. And your, you've got 
sort of things that are very loud and in your face, and then you've got things that are very far back in the mix and very far away from you. So you've got your left and right dimension, you've got your front and back, and then you've got your low and high. So think of music when you're mixing as though it's a, a box. So what we want to do is we want to create very good depth in our mix. We want, we want to have things right in our face at the front, such as most of our percussion, most of our leads, um, our, our atmosphere is something that's in the background. It's creating depth. Reverb helps with depth. So sweeps, some of the sweeps will be a bit more forward. Uh, some of them will be in the back to push depth. So this is something to keep in consideration. So we've made a few more pieces of the puzzle for our track. I'm going to call this guy Creeper. And we could turn that into audio. Why not? I'm happy with it. We can chop it up and slice it up and change it later on, or we can just quickly remake it if we need to. But it's fine. It's fine. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave it there. Um, and maybe in the next video we might start arranging. We have enough stuff to start arranging. This gives us a bit of an idea of a vibe, and then we can feed off the vibe and keep creating more things as we go and finish our whole track. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.